these hands. How many of you remember that quote? If I'm not mistaken, it was from the Never Ending Story. I think it was the, uh, the rock man, you know, rock creature, whatever he was. I haven't seen that movie in a long time, but uh, as I came out to sit down to make this video, I was going to uh, start it off a different way, and then I just thought of that quote. It was always kind of a joke when I was younger, um, but it resonated with me because there have been times when I've been, uh, let's just say, un under a psychedelic spell, especially when uh, in my younger years when I was introduced to psychedelics, um, I remember, as many others uh, have probably experienced, looking at my hands and just being amazed at the fact that humans are so perfectly suited for creating and um, all the amazing things we can do with opposable thumbs. I mean, we take this for granted in our daily lives, but it's not something, <laughs> it's, some, it's something that I think about regularly. Um, gratitude for having the ability to create. <sighs> so how's everybody doing today? It's cold out here, actually, so I'm wearing a coat and uh, I'm kind of bundled up. I'm out in my office, and uh, I had some thoughts about being human I wanted to share. And, uh, you know, it never ceases to amaze me how hung up people get on what other people are doing with their lives or their time. And the extent to what people will go to protest the rights of others or the choices of others, freedom of choice. Uh, especially when it's not harming anyone. I would like to say, first off, there's a time to protest against what others are doing if we see that it's harming our fellow man, or animals, or the environment, or anything else. But that's not what this is about. This is about the individual's plight to find truth within themselves. And just how, when once you even begin to discuss that realm of existence and, and being a human, um, you're studying consciousness from a conscious perspective, so you pretty much, um, you're stuck in your own reality, for lack of a better term. And that's the way we like it, most of the time. People are very content to live within their bubbles, and even many of those who consider themselves the most open-minded are often stuck in a certain paradigm or thought pattern or thought system. And so, what I want to start off with here is addressing <laughs> this issue of contention we have with, uh, I guess it would be um, a cognitive dissonance between um, just living our lives as best we can and just enjoying ourselves and also living for some greater cause. I mean, there are several uh, strange paradigms that we have as being a human, or paradox, sorry, uh, paradoxes within the paradigm. <laughs> that make it difficult, because this same idea of free will, for example, the idea that uh, we have choices to make, this is a, both a benefit and a curse, depending on how we use it. Like every tool, like every invention, like anything humans have ever done, we have a choice of not only how we use these discoveries, whether it's something we invent or an idea we have, but we also have the choice to how we perceive the results or the outcome of what we do as humans. To give you mo the most extreme example, George Carlin once again popped into my mind, his little quip about plastic, when he's like, oh, you know, why are humans here? The earth wanted plastic for itself, and it was this ongoing joke. And it's this idea that humans really don't know our purpose. I mean, if you think about <laughs> the earth, regardless, let's just step aside to, to consider that the earth is conscious or aware of itself, or at least self-healing, maybe not conscious in the way we are, but somewhat the Gaian hypothesis. And through history, the earth has gone through many changes, ups and downs and temperature swings, but it, it self-regulates in certain ways. And one might ask, well, why doesn't it just you know, why is it this perfect place to live? And it leads one to try to justify, well, it must have been created, we must be here for a purpose, um, we must be this perfect distance from the sun, and what are the chances that we exist in this universe? 
But then you look at the size of the universe and you think, well, shit, there's pretty good chances that we exist because life seems to be pervasive and want to go everywhere. We know that spores can survive in space and uh, that alone means that DNA can survive the vacuum of space and uh, transfer itself to other worlds. It's amazing to look at the big picture of existence and compare it to our petty little worthless lives. And I don't mean worthless because, but in the sense that <clears throat> it's almost nihilistic, uh, but I do believe that we create our own realities in the sense that we create our own happiness. Nobody else is going to do it for us. So sometimes we give up too much of ourselves to the world because it makes us feel better. It's almost like we... Um, it's kind of like the people who, who uh, give a lot to charity but then talk about it all the time, right? Or uh, folks who love to help others but have to tell everyone else that they love to help others. I think that's kind of within all of us. We have this, we want to be proud of what we've done. And <laughs> then here along comes this quote, pride, pride comes before the fall. Um, and what that basically means is if you let pride go too far, you can become arrogant but it doesn't mean we shouldn't be proud of our accomplishments. And this comes back to the hands. The things that we create with our hands are amazing. I mean, it's easy to look at society and say, oh my God, we've destroyed the surface of the planet. We know it will heal. I mean, in its own time, um, it will heal. But why does that always happen to me? Every time I'm on the phone, or every time I'm making a video, my phone decides to go off. It's like the only time that somebody texts. Um, you know, to believe that the universe is kind of aware of your existence, I, I guess people would call it, uh, um, call it whatever you want to call it. You know, it's uh, the idea that we're not just here floating in a vacuum of, in space aimlessly with no purpose or direction to our evolution. But it doesn't mean that there's some divine end or purpose to our existence. In other words, the fact that our lives really mean nothing in the big picture should be a boost of confidence to people to make it the best they can for themselves and those around them. And that's why I think discovering a purpose and finding something we can create with our hands is important. And I guess I'm not necessarily I'm using the hands as kind of a metaphor really it comes from in here I mean everything we create all the best ideas come from within it feels like we're stagnating on good ideas I mean sure we have you know amazing handheld devices and computers and artificial intelligence and robots that would scare anybody but <clears throat> where's the real innovation that's going to actually improve the lives of the world um, it's out there but capitalism, uh, not in a sense of, you know, shaming capitalism, but this idea that uh, it's all about, you know, getting yours and getting ahead has uh, kind of skewed the view of doing what's best for all. And it's a curious aspect of being a human. Why do we have those selfish traits? I mean, even within the animal kingdom, of course, some animals try to take more. And usually they're cut down in their tracks, but uh, in our society that doesn't happen. We allow, you know, others to take advantage of weaker people in our society, and we tolerate it because we don't know any better. We've been fed this line since birth that it's, you know, work, retire, get your pension, and die. It's just preposterous. And, uh, for those who have seen the value of life, who really understand, holy shit, I'm alive, you know, if you've never said that to yourself, it's like, you're missing out. <laughs> I'm sure everyone has. When I said capitalism, I, I was looking over here at this book, which I was going to use for a video I was making the other day about money. I never made it, but it's uh, Capital by Thomas Piketty. Um, it's a thick-ass book, and I haven't read it all. I've read part of it. Um, but I have wrote, read a book by Edward J. Griffin called uh, The Creature from Jekyll Island, and it's thicker, and it's pretty boring read, but it even says, I think on the cover, it reads like a detective story, not as boring as you would think, but <clears throat> um, my look into the Federal Reserve and the monetary systems through history was 
a very revealing look at how humans handle commerce through the histories. But that gives us a perspective on how humans have treated one another. Because the history that we're fed, for example, is often skewed. You hear about the great battles, but never the bad ones. You know, you hear about the successes of the country, but never the failures. And uh, capital around the world has always been kind of a reflection. Um, and disparity in wealth has, in the last 20 years, you know, we've heard it over and over, but the numbers don't lie. In the last 20 years in this country, the disparity in wealth has doubled. In other words, <clears throat> It, the amount of money that goes to the top 0.1% has doubled, and they are now taking a huge portion of the wealth. And we've been fed this crap about the economy and how it's all about working hard. And the reason I say this is because these hands have been used to do some fucked up jobs for very low wages, watching bosses get rich, you know? I was a carpenter for years, and uh, <clears throat> I still am. You, you never... Uh, you never end being a carpenter. If you're a carpenter, you're a carpenter forever. But I had about 10 to 15 years on and off um, where I had learned various skills. I built spiral staircases. Um, I worked for myself for a while, and I've got all these pictures of these crazy, like, you know, things that I'm like, wow, I did that? Holy shit. Um, those are things to be proud of, right? And I built them with my hands. And I remember how I'd have, you know, bloody knuckles all the time and stuff. And it made you feel good to get something accomplished. It's like, regardless of what you do, even if you've got paint dripping on your hands because you're a painter, whether you're painting a house or painting an art piece, um, finding a way to express yourself and to say, look at what I've created, I think is a huge part of human nature. And the jobs that we have, the menial, you know, the idea of what we considered progress has held us back from really finding ourselves and saying, whoa, we don't need to work harder. If you think about the population boom, and I, I'm not going to bring, the, I, I hate to bring this into it because, you know, it's a controversial subject, but uh, the amount of children that people have is, of course, a direct response to how many children people needed in the past to help run the family. In fact, uh, before we had birth, good birth rates, before we had the medical care that we have now, you know, folk all of us living today can't imagine what it would be like to say, well, my wife's having a baby soon. We don't know when. We don't know whether it's a boy or a girl. We don't know whether it'll survive or it's alive. And we don't know whether my wife will survive because a lot of women died during childbirth. And we kind of take these medical advances for granted. <sighs> the reason we had so many children was it was kind of an insurance policy for a lot of people, especially when, when it came to farms and farmhands. So... In today's world, these traditions have carried on through a few generations, and people are still having a lot of kids. And, and often in places, contraception is rejected because of beliefs. And um, so, the point being, here we are, we have a lot of mouths to feed, and we unfortunately have created a situation where it's dominated by mass, mass uh, these huge conglomerate companies that run most of the farms, and uh, so the farm people that used to work on the farms and the farm hands will have to go into the cities to find jobs. And there's not enough jobs for everybody because everything's up being automated. And uh, <clears throat> my point of bringing this up is that people lose hope. A lot of people lose hope. And when people lose hope, what's left for a society? You know, well, it comes back to those hands finding something to do. If, if anything, I'm talking to you and I'm talking to myself because I'm, I'm a, I love to create things. I had to leave my career as a carpenter because I, my back, I got sciatica so bad and it's caused me a lot of pain over the years. But right now, I'm not in pain. I can't do any heavy lifting, but I could still go out and use my table saw and build stuff and I really want to get inspired to start using my hands to create again. Um, I play music, I play instruments, of course, but we expect more of ourselves. It's, it's a weird pair. I don't know. It's a thing about being human. We can kind of let go of that drive. And if we let go of it too much, then we lose our motivation. And that's kind of where I'm at partially in my life right now. Like, I want to be more motivated than I actually am. You know, and I think a lot of us feel the same way. Just kind of burn out on the whole system because it doesn't, we don't feel included. 
We don't feel the excitement of community. When I go to an, an event where I, I know I'm going to meet cool people, I have a totally different feeling, a different air, a different energy than just the day-to-day -day grind, you know? And um, so it's about experience, enjoying ourselves, doing the best things we can for our own lives, and therefore we'll inspire others to do fun things with their lives. Um, we might go through a few years in our life where we're down and out, and that's okay. You know, I feel like that's where I've kind of been uh, on and off for the last year or so, trying to figure out what to do next. But it's not the first time. I've gone through, like, bouts of these, you know. And it probably reflects in some of my videos, especially when I start to talk in the winter about, you know, uh, more of the darker side of society. And, and at the same time, it's getting dark at 4 o'clock p.m. It's like, geez, how depressing. Raining all the time, you know. It's cold. But summer will come again. I can't think of a better way to uh, to find my point, I guess. Using your hands to create something is um, a very rewarding endeavor, regardless of what it is, but when we're not feeling it, it's okay. The sun will rise again. I guess that's all I got. It's getting cold and going back in. Take care, everybody. Be well.